Yo, what's up? My name is Caleb Crabtree, and I'm the youth and college pastor here at Grace Fellowship Church, and I'm so glad that you decided to click on this video. In this series, Counterfeit, we're talking about what it looks like to have a real and authentic faith versus a fake faith. Uh, we all start somewhere where maybe we're copying somebody else's faith, a parent, a grandparent, a cousin, a friend, somebody that we see their faith and we replicate it, but we have to move to a place where we have a real authentic faith that is just for us. And so we would love for you to join us in this series. You can watch online, you can watch these videos, or you could join us Sunday nights from 6 to 9 p.m. at Grace Student Night. We'd love to see you. Why don't y'all give a hand for Megan? That's right. That's like Sean had some extra claps in there. That's my sister. <laughs> no, I'm saying. Uh, so anyways, we're really excited uh, to get to sit down and have a conversation uh, with Megan tonight. And uh, for those of you who have been tracking with us for a few weeks, uh, we've been in a series that we titled counterfeit and only one person knows what we've been talking about this is great i love when y'all like really know what we've been talking about for a couple weeks you know i'm just playing but we've been talking about counterfeit and basically what we've been looking at is uh this idea of having a fake faith versus a real and authentic faith and what does it look like uh in our lives for us to have a real and authentic faith and not a fake one right we all start in a place and we'll talk about that a little bit more tonight, but uh, tonight I'm really excited for us to get to sit down and talk with uh, Megan. And for those of you uh, who don't make it, who don't know Megan uh, super well, uh, you'll kind of get to know her a little bit better uh, tonight. So Megan, why don't we go ahead and start off tonight? And, uh, well, if you guys want to pull out your phones uh, and just be ready to take notes and 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 whatnot, uh, we won't have any slides or any screens or things like that. But if there's something that she says or maybe a point or maybe I'll have I'll say, hey, write this down or whatever. Um, but you could take some notes. But remember, don't be distracted by all the things that you can have on your phone, but uh, use it for a resource to be able to uh, take some notes. So Megan, why don't we start this tonight by uh, y'all? Ju you just telling us a few things about you, a few things things uh, about Megan Japina. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> hey, girl. Hey. <laughs> no, I'm just hello, so hello, tell hello. us a few things about you. All right. Well, I'm Megan. Um, I've been attending Grace Fellowship for um, a little over 10 years. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> um, I graduated from Howland High School in 2021. All so right. <laughs> pretty close to your guys' age. <laughs> Um, I attend the Casella Veda Institute, um, so I do all things hair, so if anyone wants to come see me, get your hair did, I can. <laughs> <laughs> and she does all things hair, so. Um, what else? I've been a part of the youth group basically since Zach Potter has restructured it into kind of what it is right now. Um, <laughs> before it was kind of structured, I went for the first time, and... <laughs> It wasn't the greatest experience, <laughs> personally, because I went. I'm not a very social person. Uh, I'm very much an introvert, at least back then. I was like fifth grade, almost sixth grade. And I was very shy, very antisocial, just a very introverted little person. And I went, and <laughs> we played that game, um, you know, where you go and, like, you write your name. You take a paper, you write someone else's name if they, like, went to like this p particular place or like something like that kind of like a social game just to get to know everyone and I was like I I cried <laughs> I was like absolutely not I do not want to do this at all and I, I it was not a good experience but we restructured and I basically haven't left since um I was an intern this past summer for Grace and <laughs> I that was a really great experience that had a lasting impact on me. Um, and then I took a break from youth group after that for a few months, but God led me back here to be a leader and just to help navigate through your guys' walk with Jesus Christ. So. Amen. 
uh, and we're super glad that he brought you back to be a youth leader because I like if not, I was gonna have to like hunt you down. I feel like <laughs> so. I just want to backtrack for a second, and there are so many of you probably who could relate with that first introverted like youth group experience where you're like, uh, this is super cringe. And I love Zach, and I hope he watches this online. But like Zach, if you know Zach, he has a way of making things cringy. <laughs> So, like, that just makes it all the, all the worse for you, you know what I mean? So your first youth group experience is like, oh, hey, this is the first time I'm going to try this. And then you're like, oh, this is cringe. So, anyways, uh, we're glad that you stuck around, you know. So, anyways, well, uh, we've been... Uh, we, we, we've been in the series Counterfeit, and we probably all could relate with this idea of um, uh, fair-weather friends. How many of y'all can think about that, like fair-weather friends? Have you heard that, that, that phrase, fair-weather friends, or just like fake friends, right? Uh, uh, fair-weather friends are, um, for the most part, they're just kind of – sorry, I got a text message. I wonder what it was. Um, but anyways, uh, so uh, you could probably all relate with this idea of uh, fair-weather friends, and, and what that – uh, idea is is that um, it's friendship that's kind of out of convenience, and y'all have friends that are just it's just strictly because it's, con- it's strictly because you're like pointing at people in the room. Uh, it's strictly because of convenience, and and and, and it's just convenient because they're uh, around you. And so I bring that up because in the series we've been talking about real, authentic, growing faith of our own. And there's nothing wrong with copying somebody else's faith at the beginning, but we have to move to a different place eventually uh, beyond copying uh, somebody else's faith, but having an actual person, personal faith of, of our own, not a counterfeit one, not a copy. And so uh, just like any relationship, the problem with a fair weather friend is what? It's consistency, right? It's consistency. It's, 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 it's the consistency of, of that friendship. And so I believe that tonight, uh, just like any other relationship, uh, one of the biggest, now you guys are all going to text me. You guys are the worst. You guys... Bro, it, it straight up ripped. My pants ripped. How, how am I going to do this? Just pause for a minute. Hello? Uh, yeah, I was trying to read your text, and then... Um, You in a minute, by the way. <laughs> you're, you're supposed to say, uh, what's that SpongeBob song? I ripped my pants. I just don't know how to recover from this. I, I'm sorry that your interview went this way. Okay. Anyways, this makes me think of the one time. This is for, like, the OG youth group people. Megan will remember this. How many of y'all know James Thornton? I'm going to name drop. You know James Thornton? James ripped his pants, like, all the way up the leg in, uh, in, in Gaga Ball at the, at the mall. And he came to me, and he said, Pastor Caleb, I found a stapler and duct tape. And he had stapled and duct taped his pants. I'm like, <sighs> so anyways... Did so we'll figure out that. how, yeah, yeah, how, yeah, it actually happened. So anyways, thank you guys for being so kind and not telling me about the problem. But anyways, all right, so we're going to try to recover and talk about Jesus. All right. <laughs> all right, so where was I? Where was I? Anyways, the, the thing about any good relationship is uh, consistency, right? One of the biggest things that is the difference between a counterfeit uh, faith in, in, in God and a, and a real personal faith that is yours and not somebody else's is consistency, right? Consistency. We got to have consistency. And so what we want to talk about for a few minutes tonight as we try to get back into serious stuff is uh, that uh, a Sunday faith is good. Maybe you want to write this down. A Sunday faith is good, but a real faith is an everyday faith. Sunday faith 
it's a great starting place, right? Coming on Sundays, coming to youth group, coming to church in the morning. A Sunday faith at the start is a good uh, is a good thing, but an everyday faith is 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 what a real faith is is to have a faith that is every single day. So, uh, Megan, let me ask you this question um, in this in this conversation that we're having. As you think about your personal walk with Jesus, uh, can you tell me? Or can you tell us uh, as a group uh, about a time where your faith was just a Sunday kind of thing and it wasn't an everyday thing? So I basically grew up in a Christian home. So I've always known about Jesus, always went to church on Sunday. Um, and I wasn't, I wasn't a bad kid. I grew up, I was raised by good parents who had expectations and rules for us. And I was obedient, you know, for the most part, but I was a kid and I was disobedient at some points. <laughs> but, um, but I was basically living off my parents' faith, kind of just assumed everyone everyone did the same thing and just didn't really grasp grasp it a whole lot in a way but um so it did that um actually there's a when I was in fifth grade it was my first year at Howland and I had a friend who came up to me it was just like all of a sudden and like she grabbed my shoulder and she was like are you Catholic she I was like I don't know <laughs> and then that's just kind of like I don't know I remember that story because I was is like, yeah, I really didn't know what exactly I was going to church for. I just kind of assumed. But um, in fifth grade in Kids World, I said I said the prayer of salvation, but I didn't understand it at that point because I just didn't you know grasp it, didn't really understand the full truth of it. Just kind of raised my hand and said, yeah, I've never prayed that prayer before because I didn't. <laughs> but, um, but I never got the concept or the context of salvation or the significance of reading or praying, um, reading Bible or praying. Um, but as I got older and understood it more about it, I wasn't intentional, intentional or consistent at all. Um, and through that time, I was struggling with like making friends, not being good enough, questioning if God was real or not. Um, I felt that I felt like the friend that was left out a lot, and I felt like. I felt like the one I felt like the one friend that wouldn't have I felt like hold on I felt like no one would have cared if I was there or not. Um it led to a lot of fears, a lot of worries and a lack of confidence and just in a in a way I felt alone. But um still was always positive and um kind to others and just because I was a good kid and I was just a positive, positive kid. Um, but I did question that a lot, and that lasted all the way up till my sophomore year of high school, um, so around 2018. So, was um, the shift for you? So, like, you had all that happen, you experienced all that. This, this kind of gives a little bit of a detail of, like, your faith journey, a little bit of the things that you went through, you were wrestling through. But for you, what was, like, the shift for you where – um, this faith that was just kind of one day a week, just a Sunday faith. Uh, what was what was it that shifted for you to make it an everyday thing? So, um, the summer of 2018, um, the youth group went to the first our first trip to the Word of Life Bible Camp, and <laughs> whoop, whoop. about to hear about when we're going to that this summer yes. pretty soon. So, <laughs> um, so um, I knew I was struggling and I needed something to get me back on track. Um, so it was about f three days in, and we had a bonfire service. And um, the speaker there just presented the gospel in such a way that actually clicked with me. So we had this big bonfire. And he told us to grab a stick, and this stick represented all your worries, all your struggles, all your sins, and stuff like that. And, and, the, rep and the fire represented God. So and if you threw the stick in your fire, you just give it all to Christ and you live your life through Christ and give your life to, life to him. And that like instantly um, like just clicked with me. And like the overwhelming peace or the unexplainable peace just came over me. And I knew that it was, I knew it was where I was truly saved and my faith became my own and not just a Sunday thing and I knew I need to pursue that and yeah and 
shortly after that, I got into um, my first relationship, and you know, you, the excitement of a first relationship, you're, you make makes you feel good. Um, you just you feel like you had the, you're getting. I feel like I never got attention, or like was never known by anyone. It made me feel like not alone, and you know, just made me feel cared about. And the th the funny thing about God is that he, even though you don't realize it at the time, he gives you your spiritual gifts. And looking back on it, he gave me the, the spiritual gift of discernment because through that time, it was, it was only a four-month relationship. And he gave me the knowledge to understand that I needed to get out of that toxic environment and this discernment to get to not give in to manipulation and that was definitely a huge a huge thing because he gives you those spiritual gifts and I didn't realize that that was the word at the time but I was I had that discernment during that time and um that kind of started I started start I started out small I started doing a devotional every single morning before school and that lasted for a long time. Like I had a I had a real long Bible streak going on that app, <laughs> and um, that's kind of where I started out. I didn't really sit down and like read per se because I really didn't know how. But I started out small with a devotional, and um, of course there was highs and lows, and something I was trying to do with God every day, and He was always on my mind. Like it was the first thing I was thinking of. Awesome. You know you're getting real spiritual when your your Bible reading streaks on the app are more than your snap streaks. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm just playing. Anyways, but um, I think it, it, it's good because it brings us to this word. I want you guys to write this down. Um, it's important for us to realize at every single stage of our lives, regardless of whether you're, you're a teenager, when you're an adult, when you're in family, whatever, um, that habits are important. And I want you guys to write this down. Habits are pivotal um, to movement in our lives. Write that down. Habits. Our habits are pivotal. So they're, they're of the utmost importance uh, to movement in our lives. Not just uh, forward positive move, movement, but bad habits can take us to do what? It can give us negative backward movement as well, right? So habits are, are pivotal to movement in our lives, and it's all directional. It can be either good or bad. And I want you, I want you to write this down. Uh, if, if, if I could get you to understand one thing as a teenager tonight, it would be this, uh, that the habits you create, the habits that you create will dictate the direction that you go. Write that down. The habits that you create, they will dictate the direction that you go. You, you create good habits and you're going to go in a good direction, right? Is that fair? Is that just a fair thing to say? If you create bad habits, you're going to um, go in, in, in a wrong direction. Have you, have you all ever heard your, your parents say uh, the phrase, uh, show me your friends and I'll show you your future? Have you guys ever heard that? My parents used to tell me that all the time. If you show me your friends, I will show you your future. Well, I want to change that uh, tonight, and, and I'll say, show me your habits, and I'll show you where you end up. Show me the habits that you, you actively like, are doing in your life, and, and I'll show you where you'll end up, the direction that you'll go, because habits are going to have a huge, uh, huge impact on your direction. And so um, you and I, if we're going to... Uh, develop a real authentic faith like we've been talking about in this series, then we have to develop what? Good spiritual habits. Is that fair? We have to develop good spiritual habits. Uh, they aren't just good ideas, but they're repeated actions. Habits are repeated actions uh, that are uh, going to draw, draw us closer to Jesus and, and, and go in the direction uh, of Jesus Christ. So I want to say in front of everyone, uh, one of the reasons that it, for me it was uh, so important to have a conversation with Megan about this is because um, I believe that uh, in her life this is being so modeled and so displayed. And she's only a few months removed. Actually, tonight we were talking, and for some reason I thought she was 20 and she's 18. Uh, but uh, she's just a little bit removed from the seats that you're sitting in. And uh, in her own life, it's, it's, it's not like, like I sit down and every time Megan reads the Bible and am like knowing that you're in the word. But what happens is that uh, when somebody's in the word of God, you can see something in our life and that thing is what? Fruit, 
You can see the fruit in their life. You can see their growth in their relationship with Jesus. You can see the investment that they have in their walk with God and that God is doing something. So, um, and so it's, it's very evident to see uh, this shift in your life where you've got so serious about Jesus and, 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 and those habits are important to you. And so I just want to, uh, the students to hear from you for that specific purpose. And so let me ask you this. How have you seen God use spiritual habits in your life, your Bible reading, prayer, life group, the what, whatever, these different, you know, kind of spiritual habits and things that you've been a part of to draw you close to him uh, throughout your life, but even more specifically over just maybe the last nine months to a year? Well, let me just say there's been a lot of turning points in just in the past two years, like 2020 into 2021. And a lot, a lot of them are in relationships. But um, I want to start off by going all the way back to October of 2020, where I played soccer. I know a lot of you guys play sports, but I played soccer. It was my thing. I did it for, again, over 10 years. It was basically my life. And it was my senior year of high school, and playing a game, you know, just going out there. And... I tore my ACL and had to get as soon as possible surgery, even though I I played two games on it, not knowing it was torn at all. So it was definitely a shock knowing that, and it hurt. It hurt a lot because it put a sudden stop <clears throat> stop into my um, senior year, and the senior year was already not good to a, a start anyways because 2020 was not a good year. So it was a hard, hard enough in school, but um, so it put a sudden stop in my life. And sometimes you don't know why things happen or let, why God let bad things happen. But almost immediately after my surgery, I knew I was putting so much time into soccer and not giving any time for God. And I knew that um, <laughs> I knew I knew I needed to be in the word because I knew I wasn't and I was going off highs and lows and um but it was hard I'm still dealing with dealing with my ACL right now but um but just started getting back into soccer and that was ha- that was good but needed that needed that to stop and I didn't know why at the time but immediately after surgery I knew it was because I was not consistent at all even though I was I was going to church and going to youth group and all the things, but um, kind of going into where I was starting to, starting to able to go to the well, and those would have been on, those are on Wednesday nights, and my club practices during the offseason of high school would have been Sunday nights, or mo- Wednesday nights from, like, late. It would be, like, at 8 o'clock, and Sundays are at, or the well is at 7. And I knew it. And looking back at the time, I knew that um, if I never tore my ACL, I would have never had the amazing relationships I have now with the people I have in the well. And I started going to the well more consistently in January of 2021 because it was kind of hard for me to move around every Wednesday because recovering from surgery. Um, So going in, into more of like um, the life group stage. My sister invited me to part of, my sister Sarah, a part of the, their young, young adult life group, my sister and my brother-in-law Alex, who is in the back. Um, <laughs> yeah, Alex! <laughs> <laughs> um, they invited me to their young adult life group because she could tell that I needed a little bit something more because I wanted to really grasp what it's like, really want to grasp more and learn more, and especially from people who are a lot older than I am and just get that um, older wis- older wisdom. They're not old at all, but, um, but that wise counsel. Mm-hmm. And, um, and that was like around the beginning of March. Um, so in April... We started the 21 days of prayer and fasting in our church through the book of John. Mm -hmm. And when I tell you, when you are sitting down and really reading the word of God every single day, Mm -hmm. like, I mean, 
really intentional about it and um, just talking to him and praying to him and reading and getting to know him, he speaks to you supernaturally. Like, it's insane. And you know it's from God. Mm -hmm. I'm composing myself. <laughs> you know, I've been trying to compose myself now for the last 20 minutes. <laughs> just so you know. So we can do this together. <laughs> Anyway. For any any embarrassment that any if you if you have any embarrassment at all because this is a new thing, just know that Pastor Caleb had it worst tonight. <laughs> it was a first, you know. So, oh. anyways, back to serious yeah. stuff again. Sweat. Just had to insert that because I'm like I don't know how to get back to this. <laughs> um, but he spoke to me in such a supernatural way, and you just get that pull of you have to. He. He reveals stuff in your life that you never realized you had or like the secret sin you have in your life and um, he tells you to do things that sometimes you don't want to do and most of the time it's stuff that you just absolutely don't want to do so I was in a year and a half long relationship at the time and it was emotionally and mentally draining and it was a lot of highs and lows and it was very constant it wasn't we were both Christians so it's not like anything was crazy but he told me to end it and I wrestled with that for two weeks and even now it's still not traumatizing but hard to look back on because I don't know it's just a lot of things happen Anyway, um, but he told me to end it, and it was, I felt the pull to end it, and I did, and it was just a huge weight lifted off my shoulders, because I knew it was the right thing to do. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I've been pulling back <laughs> on the microphone. Um, but, so I ended that, and um, he revealed this a secret sin that I've had in my life of selfishness and jealousy. Mm. And I didn't really think about it much then because it wasn't too strong, but it was brought to the surface. Mm. But um, it was the strongest I've ever felt his presence. And it was something I never wanted to go away. Mm. So I continued to do that just in his word, went through the whole transition and um, <sighs> so I was obedient in that way. So the end of May into June, can't really pinpoint it exactly, but through that season, of so through, through those months, it's, it's supposed to be exciting because I had vacations planned. I was graduating high school. I was just an exciting time, mm -hmm. an exciting time of the year. And for some reason, I went through a season of, it's still hard to think about, but mm -hmm. emotional and spiritual numbness. You're doing great. It's oh all good. I knew this was going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> Mentally prepared for it. Anyway, um, it was a terrifying time for me because I was at such a high. And it was, I was afraid <coughs> I would never feel that presence again because I felt just so disconnected from it. Uh, even though I was trying to, even though I was going through that time, I was still trying to find that fulfillment in Christ. So I'm going to read you something that I sent my, my sister, Sarah, because I needed to say something about it. And we were going through a conversation um, that just kind of led to me opening up about it because I never said anything about it. Um, so I read her. I texted her this. 
I don't exactly remember when, but my mind just flipped into me not it into me not exactly being depressed because it w- I don't knew it was not depression, but not excited about things that are happening or going to happen anymore, and almost feeling empty or numb. Almost, almost just going through the motions of life and not finding fulfillment even in spending time with God and it's hard because trying to find that fulfillment in reading the word or praying and trying to figure out why I'm feeling this way all of a sudden and not understanding why is really discouraging it brings doubts to my head and I don't want to think that I don't want to think about constantly trying to go to gain some sort of feeling back by listening to worship music and really in, oh, hold on. I'm really listening to the words because usually when I get into a funk, I do that and it helps greatly. But having it, but I haven't felt it much. I bet I searched on YouTube. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, Alex. You brought her tissues, but ain't nobody bring no no pants for me. All right, back to the serious stuff. Oh I'm going to fight you later, my guy. <laughs> anyway. Right, sorry. So, I was searching on YouTube and just trying to find any sort of fulfillment or answers to what I'm feeling right now. And some videos helped me, like, deal with this numbness. And I found things that gave me some clarity, but I still felt the same. Oh. <laughs> So what I've learned from the videos that I watched and stuff like that, I I learned that it could be a, a way of God kind of taking down emotions because you just went through something traumatizing or it, for emotional healing. But my sister um, replied and said, a lot of times God allows these feelings to creep in to see how you grow personally with him. He wants to see if you run away or seek fulfillment in him because it's challenging when you don't feel like reading texts, let alone God's word. He's challenging you, and I believe you're meeting the the challenge. Um, So that she basically explained what the videos explained to me is that when you're finding fulfillment in God, you you're God gives you these challenges to see how you're going to face them. And if you're turning away and turning to sin, you don't, you won't find fulfillment in that. Um, But she also went to explain, it explains how God allows to take, God allows Satan to take away things on purpose, let you suffer and feel things emotionally you wish you didn't because it's God's way of growing you. And then she recommended that I read First Peter, which teaches which teaches us that Jesus suffered that same thing as we do, which makes me feel so personally to him, and it's very very encouraging. Because, and I I went to read First Peter, and it definitely has it has validated the feelings that I've felt because Jesus felt them too, mm-hmm. and. I wasn't alone in it, and it it gave some clear it gave clarity for sure, and it's still a hard hard time to go back and think about, obviously. Um, it, I didn't want to feel distant from God, but trying go turning to Him in those moments is how you can find, find fulfillment, and so. I got out of that stage, I got out of that funk, and then I got had another relationship that I was very excited for. I prayed about it, um, and it was almost, it was filling my mind too much, and the thought of it felt my mind, filled my mind too much, and God gave me what I prayed for, and it lasted for a little over a month. And it ended, and it completely broke my heart. 
Um, it was the worst heartache I've ever experienced. And it was, as I was talking to my sister that night, um, she, uh, I said to her, I don't know where to go from now. I don't know what to do. And she told me to do the same thing I did the last time is find your fulfillment in God. Because that's the only way you can, that's the only way you can feel better is to just turn to him. The relationship wasn't bad. It did, we, it ended on good terms and it needed to end. Because I believe God gave me what I prayed for to get it out of my head. Because I, if, if it never happened, I believe to this day, I probably would still be thinking about it. Or thinking of the thought of that future. And I believe he put it in my life just to take it away so I didn't have to, so I can refocus my mind on what's important. Mm. What's more important than that is to be focused on him. And um, the exact reasons of why, other reasons why it ended are still unclear. Or the, just the circumstances around it. But um, I knew one of the things my sister also said to me was, you turn your fulfillment in God because I don't want you to get to that numbness state that you felt the first time. Yeah. And that brings us all the way up till now. <laughs> um, it hasn't been the best season of life right now because winter is hard. Winter is very hard and being consistent. And it's been up and down. I'm going to be honest. I have, it's been a while since I've read my Bible, but it's, um, at least the intentional times with it. Because um, I've still been doing a devotionals. I've been going to church on Sundays, my uh, life groups on Tuesdays, and the well life groups on Wednesdays. And I find so much fulfillment there. But again, you can't just do those things. Um, but I was doing devotionals. I've been praying, um, listening to worship music um, in the mornings um, on my way to school. And... Um, definitely the beginning of December, the, it comes back around to this, my sin of selfishness, and it's been the strongest it's ever been for reasons I don't know why, most likely because I didn't take care of it the first time it came around, and it's just that consistent sin that's just it your flesh and the holy spirit battles every single day and it's just been that's constant tug of war battle in my heart and i haven't spoken about it really at all to no one because it's almost it's almost embarrassing but i know it's a part of my testimony and your testimony grows Absolutely. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, I absolutely hate it, and I'd rather not have it. It really, it really sucks. But um, I'm, I believe I'm on the uphill, and it's really hard to have that sort of sin because Jesus tells you to love others and serve others, mm -hmm. and it's really hard to do that when that's just in the back of your head yeah. or in the back of your heart all the time. Absolutely. But I feel as though I'm in the uphill of that. So. Good stuff. <sighs> that was good. That was good. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's right. Well, for sake of time, I want to I wanna go back to one thing she said, and, and we'll try to take anything else that we ask, and we'll just we'll just try to – bullet point through this so he can as quick as he can but one verse i want to touch on when she talked about uh when she was really hearing from the lord you guys remember that she said that a, a couple minutes ago when she was talking about all this stuff uh when she was really hearing from the lord she was intentional in the word she was intentional in the word she was doing something where she was feeding herself right she was she was actively pursuing in her relationship with god i want to read i want to read one verse passage of scripture is that cool y'all still tracking with us all right it's amazing, considering the way the nights went. 
Hebrews chapter 5, verses 12 through 14, it says this. It's not going to pop up on the screen, but if you want to make note of it to go read it yourself later. It says this, in fact, though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you the elementary truths of God's word all over again. You need milk, not solid food. Anyone who lives on milk, being still an infant, is not acquainted with the teaching about righteousness. But solid food is for the mature, who by constant use have trained themselves to distinguish good from evil. So uh, there's this kind of picture of milk and solid food, milk and solid food. And the idea of, of, um, the idea of, of milk is kind of like a, a, a baby faith, kind of like we've been talking about, an imitation of somebody else, uh, kind of copying somebody else, needing somebody else to constantly feed you. But solid food is that personal faith that we've been talking about as we wrap up the series tonight, right? where you actually are feeding yourself. From the word of God, you are opening the Bible, you are in prayer, you are intentionally feeding yourself by spending time in the word of God, not just somebody else's relationship with Jesus because you're, you're kind of flying under the radar of their, their faith, but you're actually growing in your own faith, pursuing Jesus yourself. Are y'all talking about that? It's, it's, it's solid food is when you, like on your own, are, are eating, right? You're eating the word of God, eating the word of God, actually taking it in for yourself. Solid food is when you, on your own desire just to be in the word of God, is in the word of God and in prayer, your own spiritual disciplines where you're doing it for you. You're not doing it because I say, hey, you should do it. You're not doing it because your mom and dad say, hey, you should do it. You're not doing it because one of the leaders say you should do it or Pastor Roy says you should do it, but you're doing it because you want to do it. You all tracking with that? That's what it is to eat solid food. What he's addressing here is saying, you should already be there. This is what Hebrews is saying. You should already be there. By this time, you should be teaching somebody else the word of God. But instead, you're still drinking milk. You should be eating solid food, but instead, you're still, you're still drinking milk. Why? Because of a lack of intentionality. I'm just going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, Use Greg as an example real quick. Greg and Paul. I wrote this in here, but I'm not pulling you up. But uh, just think about this. Think about this. Greg, how ridiculous would it be? Because the idea of, of milk is somebody feeding you. You're tracking with that? The idea of solid food is you feeding yourself. How ridiculous would it be if my guy Greg went on a date and took Paul, sat on his lap, and said, Daddy, feed me. He ain't going on a second date. <laughs> like, he, 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 he sits on his lap in the booth, and, and it's like, feed me, feed me. He cut, Paul cuts the steak. Here you go. Oh, good job, Greggy. Girls, y'all be like, no, not doing that again. Big fella needs to learn how to take his steak. You know what I mean? Like. But that, so check it out, check it out, check it out. You, 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 you wouldn't, you'd be like, no, because he's still eating baby food. It's weird. You, wouldn't, you would expect him at this point in his life to do what? Be able to feed himself. That's what we're seeing in this Hebrews passage, is by now you should be able to do it, but you're not. When it comes to faith, because we see in this passage, you see constant use. It's about you and I constantly repeating and act, this, this action, practicing ourselves, we see this, uh, these few words having trained themselves. When it comes to our faith, we have to do what? We have to learn to feed. One more time. We have to learn to feed. Ourselves. We have to learn to feed ourselves. All right, I'll just see if I could do it. We have to learn to feed ourselves in our faith. Constant use of the word of God, distinguishing good from evil. What is it? A real faith is an everyday faith. A real faith is an everyday faith. Megan, I'm going to skip question five that we had in here, um, and I'm going to skip question six because we gotta, we gotta, we, we've, we've got to start by feeding ourselves. I want to give you guys a couple things, a couple things when it comes to feeding yourself, a couple things when it comes to feeding yourself, and we're going to ask Megan one more question, and we're going to close. Are you good? All right. Buckle in. A couple things when it comes to uh, four, four main parts about feeding yourself when it comes to your faith. Number one, write these down. Hear from God hear from God, hearing from God. What does that mean? Read the Bible, do a devotional plan, whether it's digital, whether it's physical, do, do some, start somewhere in hearing from God and you hear from God in the word of God. So number one, hear from God. Number two, pray, 
pray to God. Hear from God, pray to God. Why? You can pray mentally, you can pray out loud, you can, you can read a journal, you can do a number of different things, uh, but do it and build the daily habit of prayer, which is talking to God. Number three, talk about God. So hear from God, you got to be in the Word. Pray to God, you got to talk to Him. Number three, you got to talk about God. Tell other people, whether it be friends, whether it be family, somebody in your life, talk to other people about your relationship with Jesus. Talk to other people about what you're experiencing, the things that you're facing, things that you believe about God, the doubts that you have. Talk, talking, uh, talking about God with other people is one of, the, one of the best things you can do to live out a re- real authentic faith. Number four, live your life for God. Live your entire life for God. It's a spiritual habit. Make wise choices that honor God with your life. Don't, don't live a life that's like, I'm just going to go on sinning just because I can and I can just receive grace. Well, 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 God's grace is good, so why can't I just keep doing what I'm doing? And live for God. Go out and live a life for Jesus that models what it looks like to honor God with your life. That's one of the greatest ways that you can actually demonstrate to the world is just by the life you live. You don't have to... If you live a life that is honorable to the Lord, and that is, that is a sermon in and of itself. And I believe that the greatest thing that you can preach to the world is the life you live, not the words you say. So go live for God. So you got to hear from God, pray to God, talk to God, and then live your life for God. All right, I want to ask one more thing, and we'll close. You got 30 seconds. 30 seconds. What would be the last thing that you want to say to these students before you leave in 30 seconds, go. 29. Okay, 29. okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, I'm going to get real deep here. Um, you guys, we're not promised tomorrow. So, if you were to leave here, and I'll wake up tomorrow, and you're standing before Jesus, and you think you are being a good Christian and coming to church and every Sunday, every youth group, every night in every Sunday night, and never got a chance to know Christ and have a relationship with him outside of Sundays and not producing fruit, Jesus isn't going to say, well done, my good and faithful servant. He's going to say, depart from me, for I never knew you. So people watch you more than you think, especially if you claim to be a Christian. Um, So if you're not living living a life of Christ and not living with the image of Christ because Jesus came to this earth to, earth to be an example and we're supposed to live like that example. We're not perfect by any means and we are going to stumble and have these seasons of we're going to have lows and highs. But if you're constantly trying to spread a light and just trying to live for him and talk to others about him, it's, it, that's how you're supposed to live your life as, as a Christian. And it's, you, you want to say, you want to hear, well done, my good and faithful servant. Amen. Amen. That was good. Well, yeah. Why don't y'all give Megan a hand? Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing. And uh, I wish we would have had like even more time for that. Cause there's, there's a lot of good stuff that we even had to skip over, but give her one more hand. Give her one more hand. Well, hey, uh, we are we are right at eight o'clock, and I want to end every every head bowed, every eye closed. Um, just before before we go, I want to give everyone an opportunity if you don't know Jesus to to come to know Jesus. Because here's the thing, we talked about how real real faith is an everyday faith, but I want to say this: before real faith is an everyday faith, it's a first time decision just to say I want to I want to surrender my life to Christ. Side conversations, let's cut them out. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Before real faith is an everyday faith, it's a decision to put your faith in Jesus Christ. And so before we close tonight, if you don't know Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, I want to give you the opportunity to place faith in him tonight. The Bible says that Jesus left heaven and he came to earth and he died in your place and in my place because we're all sinners. But yet he was the only one who was sinless. The Bible says that the penalty or the wage for sin is that uh, is death. 
and that you and I deserve to die because of our sin. But yes, as Jesus came and he was willing to lay down his life and die in your place because he was the only one who did not sin. The Bible says that if you place faith in that, you believe in that, and then you confess that with your mouth, that you'll be saved. It's a starting place, and it's a really long journey. I'm not going to lie to you that when you place faith in Jesus, it makes everything easier in your life. But I will tell you that it's the greatest decision that I've ever made, and I believe that every single leader that I know that's placed faith in Jesus and all the young people in here that have placed faith in Jesus would say, it's the greatest decision I've ever made in my life. Doesn't make everything easier, but it is the most rewarding thing that you could ever experience because you move from death to life. And so tonight, if you want to start a relationship with Jesus, as we're going to close out this counterfeit series, you want to have a real authentic faith. It's a starting place of placing your faith in Jesus. Just have a conversation with them. Maybe if you need help wording a prayer like that, you could you could just repeat the words that I'm praying. You could bail out at any point, but just say, God, I recognize tonight that I'm a sinner. God, I recognize that I need my sins forgiven and that the only way that I can have a relationship with you is through Jesus. Tonight, I place my faith in Jesus. Will you forgive me of my sins? And will you help me as I move forward? Well, hey, I really hope that you enjoyed uh, this message from our Counterfeit series. Like I said earlier, we would love to see you in person hanging out with us at Grace Student Night from 6 to 9 p.m. on Sunday nights. See you guys.